What is the greatest terrain Games Workshop has ever made? I'll give you a moment to answer. Did you say Octaris? Cause it is. Octaris is the greatest pack of terrain Games Workshop has ever made. Four beautiful orky corners that when you nest them together, form one humongous orky mega construct. It is glorious, it is beautiful, it is perfect. And we've been gaming on it for about two years. And in that time, we here at Eons of Battle Incorporated thought, we can make perfect better. And we did. Introducing the May Terrain, the very unofficial expansion to Octaris. We've got extra wall sections, corners, doors, a fully stocked bar. It is quite simply going to be the greatest orc terrain board ever constructed. It is Orktober in May. It's Wog. This is gonna require aged metal, rust effects out the wazoo, object source lighting, a little bit of orky freehanding, and faking a neon glow, but in the end, it'll expand this kill team board out to full 40K proportions, which is good, because 10th edition is right around the corner, and 10th edition is looking spicy. We're gonna need a place to play, but now it is time to get to work. Because orcs, that'll be the last orc joke. Ah, <sighs> no, it won't be. All this terrain was printed out of beautiful Soriatech resin. It's a tough resin with enough flex to handle terrain. Follow the link in the description below to give Soriatech resin a try. I started out by spray painting everything brown and then giving it a zenithal of a warm tan color. And when you got a humongous set of terrain to paint like this, you gotta, it just gives you a spicy base to work up from. And speaking of spicy, metallics. I made up my own metallic paint using some dark Vallejo liquid metal, a copper color, and some brown. I shoved all these colors into my airbrush and added a lot of water. I want this to darken the piece and give that metallic sparkle without covering up everything that was my first few layers. It's all about layers. Onions have layers, ogres have layers, and really good terrain has layers. You can't paint them just like normal miniatures or else this one piece will take like 100 hours. But the more interesting layers you can apply, like transparent layers that you can sort of see through, adds tons of visual interest and depth to the pieces. The next layer for these guys is going to be sponging. Typically, I sponge with a tiny piece of charcoal foam, but for an entire terrain board, I'm using a big old piece of natural sponge. I picked up some brown and began squishing this into the model everywhere. The arcs aren't known for their good housekeeping, so this layer is the centuries of dirt that they've dragged in under their squig leather boots. Then I made up a black brown and did the sponging again. This looks like I'm going way too far, but once all the steps are in place, the black sponging will add some nice texture. Now the base metals are all done, but I don't just want to leave it all rusty steel. Orcs are artists at heart, and they particularly enjoy the colors red and yellow. So I glazed red over certain panels to make them more interesting, glazing a brighter red over half. Doing this in a glaze lets the undercoat show through. I did the same thing with the yellow. I tried to put myself in the mind of the orcs, who have a keen eye for interior decorating. The base coats are done and everything is looking nice and bright. Time to knock down that brightness with a wash. Not wanting to go through all the wash paint I own, I decided to make my own. Out of transparent inks, a brown and black, some acrylic flow aid, and the secret sauce that helps the wash stick in the recesses, matte medium. I poured it all together until the cup was halfway filled, and then I filled up the rest of the way with water. Then I drowned the pieces in this wash, using my biggest brush to work it into the recesses. The wash did what washes do, which is really darken all these pieces, which is actually what I wanted to happen. I wanted them nice and dark to provide a lot of contrast between the really bright scuffs and scratches I'm gonna add, and because I like bright miniatures, and bright miniatures look really good on dark terrain. Now for some light colors. I sponged a bright silver to show all the chips and scratches. Over the top of this dark base, it really stands out, and it adds more interest to the otherwise flat sections. The wash shade in my recesses, now for some bright edge highlighting. Bright silver on a big ol' makeup brush, wiping this over everything. Now the recesses are dark and the edges are bright, every surface is full of contrast. The walls are all finished painted, and now it is time to move on to all the gubbins. And I gotta think about order of operation here, because I was tempted to do all of the light bulbs, but actually, I think the orcs graffiti would have to go first. My walls are all dark warm colors, so to make the graffiti really stand out, I'm going with a blue, which the orcs believe is the luckiest color. My penmanship is horrible. Luckily, so is the orcs, so no matter how badly I do, I think it'll turn out okay. I don't often paint with the airbrush, but years of using it have taught me to line things up properly. I got some decently legible letters, and it makes me think of actually doing some canvas painting with the airbrush would be really good practice. To try to make the letters stand out a little more and be readable, I painted a line of light blue in the middle of each letter. All right, the letters are done, but I still don't get to do the light bulbs because really, the light would cast on the rust, so I should do the rust next. I love a good orange pigment powder, and to apply it to such large pieces, I took a ratty old brush and pressed the dry pigments all over the cracks and crevices. 
And then I took a squirt bottle full of water, set it to mist and squirted the panels enough to get them dripping wet. The mist setting is important because it doesn't have enough power to knock the pigments off, it just saturates them and locks them into place. And spraying enough to make it drippy pulls the pigments from the flat surfaces into the recesses. Once dry, it looks a little like a wash. A really, really dry, dusty wash. I used up most of my rust pigment, but it is looking schnazzy, and now I get to work on those lights and do a little object source lighting. Which object source lighting is one of the weirdest terms in the miniature painting hobby. Object source lighting, it's like a phrase with most of the words deleted. The demonstration of light being cast from a source onto an object. Object source lighting, it doesn't really say what it is. I prefer the term glowy parts. Just like a college kid's dorm room, the orcs also put up Christmas lights to make their spaces feel a little more warm and inviting. I sprayed some yellow over the bulbs, letting the airbrush overspray on each bulb so yellow is cast onto the walls and surrounding details. Yellow is the color of my cast light, but an important thing about glowy bits is the source of the glow has to be brighter than the light cast, and the light cast has to be proportional to how much more bright the source is. So to finish off these light bulbs, I painted a small blob of white paint in the middle of each light bulb. A small dot because there's not much light being cast. If the yellow overspray was huge, I would have painted the entire light bulb solid white. I also want the open close sign to have an element of lighting to it. I base coated the letters with red and green with a paintbrush, then oversprayed these colors a little with the airbrush. Then I worked in layers, painting on lines going over and over again with thinner lines of green and red mixed with white until I had thin white lines which is the brightest part of the neon. The Orc Brewery is now open for business. Well, actually, I suppose it's not because the bar isn't stocked. Time to fix that. The Orc Bar might not be clean, but it's got enough booze to sedate a snake bite. I want to make those bottles prominent. I base coated the bottles with white paint, carefully picking out each hooch bottle in preparation for glazing later. Then I took a brown Army Painter speed paint and painted this over 50% of the bottles. Then when that was dry, I painted the rest with bright green speed paint. I don't know if the Orcs make these bottles or if they're all stolen from the Imperial Guard. Maybe they have a stolen STC for making bottles. The Orc Bar is fully stocked with Squig Scotch and Gretchen Guinness. The only thing left to paint is the stage. That's right. There's a goth rocker stage. This is the preeminent place for a goth rocker to shred in style. Our artist Licorice has actually already taken a crack at painting up this piece. I want to try something special with the lights. I pulled off the trusses loaded down with lights pointing at the stage, and to properly replicate these lights casting beams onto the stage, I need a stencil. I took my army painter instructions because they're made of a thick paper and cut a round hole. Airbrushing through the hole will give me sharper circles than I could get with the airbrush alone. And I held the stencil a little bit above the stage floor so the beam of light was not perfectly crisp, a little fuzzy on the edges. I sprayed white paint to base coat the beams of light, then I sprayed some speed paint over top to add color. If I only sprayed speed paint, the spot of light would be as dark as the stage. The base coat was needed to get the bright, saturated colors. And I did the same thing for the lights, airbrushing the bulbs white and then glazing the same speed paint colors over them. I have been wanting to do this all day, finally gluing the trusses into position. And I need to paint that sign, and I know just what I want to do on it. I want to get a nice chrome finish on that sign, and I have just the thing, a pen. This is a Molotow chrome pen. It's the chromiest chrome I have ever come across, so I drew chrome onto the letters. And I decided the orcs would have used the rest of their chrome on the door sign. The booze hole. Cover is five teeth. Now to populate the stage with all the gubbins, the floor speakers, the mic stand, and the guitars. The stage is complete. The orc brewery is ready to open. What made the Octaris terrain so great is how it was all meant to fit together. Typically, terrain is just small, medium, and large elements that all just sort of get spread out. But the Orc Terrace terrain is perfect. You can make big buildings, you can have walls connected by catwalks. It was all so precise and evident how you were meant to play with it. It was the best Games Workshop terrain that they ever made, and you can't get it anymore. Games Workshop discontinued it. The best terrain of all time, gone forever. But we're bringing it back. Behold, Orkvana. With all new wall sections that add way more dynamic ways to assemble the terrain from one bunker into a proper fortress. A citadel of Gork and Mork. A salacious saloon where the orcs can really cut loose. Foot loose. Kick off their snagaboy shoes. Where the goths can rock and the boys can get bombed. A place for mechs to tinker and the grots to hide. This terrain will be available to our Patreon supporters at the EOB Terrain tier and above for the month of May, with the STLs hosted by Comics Games and Things, or you can find it on our tribes over at My Mini Factory. It's beautiful. It's perfect. It's so positively orky. I can really let my orc brain out when I'm assembling this into the most crazy and ramshackle shapes. 
The orcs hold a special place in my heart. They're the comic relief of Warhammer 40k, and I like to think of myself as the comic relief of my life. A world full of nothing but grim darkness, only war, one race in the galaxy, wouldn't have it any other way.